Each of us is created in the image of God, a precious and holy vessel. We have been through a harrowing time since last Lent that has shattered our sense of wholeness like a glass vessel broken into pieces. May we enter this Lenten season mindful of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who in his death is the healer of every ill. Let us come to God asking that we be forgiven and restored. Lord God, we are bodies fashioned by your hand and in your image, shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty. And yet we have failed to see beauty in ourselves and in others. We are broken people living in a broken world. Forgive us our mistrust for our neg neglect and our lack of compassion for others. 
Help us to see you in the lives of those who carry heavy burdens and empower us to be a people of wholeness and hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Know this, in Christ you are forgiven and restored. Christ's light is a treasure given freely. Rest in God's grace. Amen. Our reading is from Matthew's Gospel, the eighth chapter. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. I must have been about eight or nine years old when my parents purchased a television console for our household. This was the kind of expense that was not taken up every day in our house. My father was a blue collar worker and my mother was a stay at home parent. And so we relied for our well being on my father's income exclusively. And I suspect that with this purchase, there had been some weeks and months of saving for it. But when it came over to the house and when it was delivered, uh, it was a very interesting television indeed because the Sylvania console not only had the center picture tube, like all televisions had in those particular days, but it was then surrounded by what the manufacturer called a halo. It was a piece of plastic with an internal illumination that came on every time the set itself was turned on. And I guess the idea probably was that it was to be sort of a space age look for the 1960s. This was a black and white television. Color shows were not particularly prevalent even in that particular day. But it was, certainly was a state of the art piece of equipment. And my father in particular, I believe, was proud of it. Proud of the fact that he had been able to save to make the purchase for his family. Proud of having acquired something that, at least at some level, must have felt as if it elevated his status. There was a summer evening when my sister and I were in the house playing and my parents were in the backyard working in the garden and my sister and I made a decision to turn the living room into something of a gymnasium, which was a bad choice, it turned out to be. The game was how many somersaults it would take to get from one corner of the living room to the next. And I was the one who was to try that out and measure that out in my activity. 
And sadly, the end result is that I ended up putting my heel in the bottom right corner of that plexiglass plastic halo. And there wasn't any mistaking it. There was no way to hide it. It was clearly something that I had done, certainly an accident, but nevertheless, I was the guilty party. There were certainly ramifications and consequences for our behaviors, and they did come down swift and harsh. But I think probably the thing that hurt me the most in the aftermath of that incident was not the punishment received, but the fact that my father had tried desperately in the aftermath to try to paste and to piece together the gaping scar at that right bottom corner of that halo. He tried desperately to fix it, and he could not. And what he was left with, and what we were all left with to look at day in and day out, was the scar that I had created. Not only had I broken that part of the TV set, I had the distinct feeling that I had also in some way broken my father's heart. We are broken at different times in our lives. We can't avoid that. We make promises that we can't keep. There are promises that we try to keep that we cannot possibly attain to. I know that my heart has been broken on any number of occasions in my life, and I'm pretty sure that I may have broken some hearts along the way. I know that institutions are broken, people's lives are in despair, and the promises that we make, the best ones that we're able to make, still aren't always fulfilled. And so we live in a broken world. We see the signs of it all around us, and we wonder at times how it is that we can move forward and be able to bring about some sense of healing and wholeness in the midst of so much despair. And especially in these pandemic days where we are left to ourselves, when we are isolated, when we see the signs of death and despair all around us, it is hard for us to get beyond the sense that our worth is somehow measured by our brokenness. Unfortunately, we believe the lie of the world that tells us that because we are broken, it must be somehow our fault. But God says something very different to us. In the reading for this evening, Jesus is coming down from the mountain and he is met by a leper who kneels before him and says, you will heal me if you choose. And Jesus says, I do choose, be healed. And at that moment, the leper's brokenness is restored to wholeness. I think about that story, and I think about the lives that have been broken and shattered during this past year of pandemic, loved ones that have been lost, people who are in first responder situations who are exhausted after all that they have been through during the course of this past year, and wondering truly whether or not we will ever be able to get beyond these days. We feel broken, we feel shattered. We feel the rough edges of our brokenness and wonder whether there is any remedy at all for those things. And Jesus makes the promise to us in so many ways and in so many words that his love for us smooths out those rough edges and that God's grace is sufficient for the day and that while time and circumstance and experience will also contribute to that softening of the edges. It's God's love that makes the most difference. It's that grace that comes from Jesus. And finally, our brokenness is redeemed in Christ's death on the cross. Christ dies for us, dies ahead of us, and in his dying shows us his brokenness. And through that, we are healed. Christ who comes to us and walks in our skin, who is all so much a part of our daily living, and in whose life we can find life and hope as well. It isn't a fix, but it is an accompaniment. Christ who walks with us 
And as we are restored and as we are healed, we live in the sure and certain hope that because Christ lives, we too can be a new creation. Healer of our every ill, of separation and fear, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, comforting, restoring, redeeming. We trust in your power to smooth out our shattered bodies and spirits, binding together that which is wounded. We pray especially for those who have experienced the physical loss of family and friends in the pandemic and those who are still suffering the consequences of the illness. We pray for each person who suffers in body in other ways, weariness from inactivity or weariness from overactivity in this time. We pray for those whose treatment of maladies has been put on hold and those who have suffered isolation in their illness, whatever the cause. We give thanks for the medical staff everywhere around the world who have shown unbelievable strength and stamina, and we mourn the demise of too many caregivers who risked their lives for our sake. We place all of our prayers into your hands, Lord, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Rejoice in God's grace and live in the light and hope of Christ's resurrection. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm.